So we are at our engine. We brought home our conversation piece piston that blew up in this cylinder. We have our first ring in, and we're going to see if it weigh, if it goes to fifteen thousandths. Yeah, so I think that's fifteen. So we leave that in there. I said generally your oil rings all the same. So let me put another one in. I won't show that, but I'll show you how to start grinding these other rings. We're down to our second ring, and I pulled out several. A filler gauges so i'm going for 34 but i'm going to start with this 32 and i have a two thousandths here that i'll add to it when i get to my final but this one's already been done it took me about five trips going back and forth it's around 15 terms i think but uh, it's kind of hard to do it with uh with two hands oh goodness it's the glove i got hair on my glove but anyways that's 34 thousandths now we're on a fresh one on cylinder two, and I'll show you, I've already ground it once, and I'm just, see we're still tight. And now I'll take it back out and go back to the grinder. So Real Street has a really good video, but this is just an Amazon grinder. And the whole idea is, I'm gonna keep my dot up, cause that's gonna be my, on, th on this set of rings, this is the only one that matters. And you can see there's a step. See that step? You see it real good right there. Well, the dot means this has to be on the top. And you want these pins here to help support the ring like that. And then the whole, kind of the, the issue is you kind of got to hold it straight and keep it in line. And then you just turn it. And you'd be amazed how much material this takes off. I thought about making this, like put this on a drill or something. But I think it'd just be way too aggressive. But, and then you need to turn it going inwards, so the like this, because you want the metal shavings to go away from the, cylind the cylinder liner. Now, you got the deburred in a way, but you just, it's good practice to do that. And you would think to take the material off both sides, but no, you just keep taking it off one side. You don't flip, back, flip it back and forth. It's, and I recommend the side that's the opposite of the turning is what you do. So that's literally it. I just put it in there. I try to make it parallel with the wheel. I just give it about four or five turns and check it again. Okay, so literally I've ran through these probably 10, 15 minutes. I've learned about 12 revolutions. Knocks off about where I want it to. And it's just one or two revolutions after that hones me in. You can see the gap here. And that's it's close to around the, the 34, 35, 33, which is going to be plenty for what we're doing. So I want to show you, I'm on my last one, number eight, what you have to do. So I had to sit it in the bore just because I had need two hands and one hand is a videotape. So you take your piston, you need to even it up with that because I don't think I showed this earlier. And what I do is I just use the edge right here of these two wrist pin slots. I line them up like that. And boom. Now we know it's somewhat flush. You can see like the ring is actually dead even. If you take our 15 thousandths, see if I can get the camera on it. 15 thousandths is, it actually goes, it goes in there. So it's a little bit bigger than 15. But anyways, um, definitely not a 32. For sure, right? Boom, well, nowhere near it. So I'll take it to our grinding wheel, knock off, do 12 revolutions and recheck it. So 12 revolutions, let's realign. Something like that. We should at least be at the 32 thou mark. Yep, so that goes in there easy. So something to note is the second ring's a lot softer than the top ring. So that's gonna be something to learn. So boom, as you can see, that's around that 32, 34. And we're doing a good job. You can see we don't got no weird taper or anything. That's pretty straight on every one of these. So now I need to get my fingernail file. I just need to make sure we deburr all these secondary rings so we don't forget and end up scarring our cylinder because we left the burr on that ring. So we got all our, ring, our secondary rings deburred, put back in the appropriate bag. Now we're going to do... 24 thousandths on our top ring just to verify it won't fit we're going to start off with five revolutions and see how much that takes off so 
decided to get frogging with 10 revolutions and we we might have went a thousandth too much so we need to dial that back to six but let's pull out our next ring we'll do the number three and see what happens there i want to say do not be intimidated to do this i watched videos upon videos of how to do this i watched summit videos they almost had me sold on going out and buying a 300 dollar ring gap and tool cut and all it needed to be straight you look that is fairly straight there's a little bit of taper on this one um that might be a little bit wide this one looks pretty doggone good this one's yep good good i mean i'm super happy and i literally I, i've been putting this off doing this we just need to deburr this stuff now and all because of just watching videos and i kind of knew something was up when like sorry you couldn't see that one real street was even showing how they were using a hand grinding tool and i think i know why because it ain't nothing like literally i got an hour in the garage doing this so these are got the 24th out now and i'm keeping them organized by the bag the best i can i'm going to deburr everything and that's it so and now we're we're gapped for boost. See, this one's a little bit crooked, so you got to kind of pay attention to that. But you can see that the it might have caught it on the way out. Yeah, no, just a little tight, which is perfect. But I mean, no big deal. That tool's like right over here is like thirty bucks on Amazon. A lot of people are complaining because the wheel ain't straight. You kind of see it. I mean, it ain't. Crazy, but this isn't high speed precision, uh, precision stuff. You're just, I drop that. You're just keeping it tight against this ring. You're putting a finger right here to keep it from fluttering. And you just try to keep it straight. And that's it. And you turn it. It only takes, like I said, I think it's eight turns on my top ring uh, because we had to go, what, 10, about 10 thou. And then our bottom ring took 12. Because we were going more. I think it was like 14 to 15 thou. But anyways, I'm going to end the video off here. Don't be scared. Do it. It ain't that big of a deal. And it's just an air pump. And you rather the tolerances be a little bit too loose than tight. For what The reason why you're gapping this to this level or this wide is because of horsepower and heat. So you rather it be a little bit loose. So don't be get upset when your your gaps are a little bit on the large size, say if you go over a thousand or two, no big deal. Now you don't have to worry about that cylinder uh, button because the whole issue is more heat in the cylinders, the metal is going to expand, that piss that ring gets tighter and tighter and to the point they kiss. And you already see twenty four thousand, so that's on the large side, is isn't even that much. And when they kiss, it bows out and it scars up your cylinders. And once your cylinders are scarred. They're not going to seal anymore. That's compression loss, and that's and your engine's ruined. So, gap and rings not hard. Do it at home. Let's bring back, you know, home projects. On to the next one.